Hello friends, this is Gökçe from cgcave.com and today we are going to learn about attach, multiple attach and detach tools. Now, this is how you join the objects or explode the objects in 3ds Max. Uh, so let's start, uh, go to the top view, hit T and let's start with a, an L shaped line. I'm not going to use the snaps this time. Uh, I'll just disable them, hit S and then I'm going to create an outline from this let's say 20 centimeters uh, I can also make this a little bit longer I'm not just going for exact dimensions just this time uh, I'm just uh, show uh, I just want to show you how to join objects that's all okay now let's say this is a, a corner uh, wall uh, for our interior or exterior scene and we want to add some walls to this, okay? And we want to keep all the uh, walls or the floor plan as one object. And uh, th that way we can easily edit it, uh, adjust it or whatever. You can use separate things, as uh, of course. But if you use separate uh, objects for the walls, uh, that you will face a problem. Let me show that to you. Uh, I'm going to create this wall first. I'll, uh, I have applied an extrude and... Uh, input 300 for the amount now if I in the end as I render this you need to always chamfer the corners of the objects I think I have told this <laughs> before and I will repeat this a lot throughout this uh, these series but for realistic uh, renders you always need to bevel the edges or chamfer the edges okay that's very important because in real life when you paint these walls uh, you will always see a um, filleted corner in here that paint uh, joins with the other wall right uh, just right now raise your head and look at the uh, walls or corners uh, in your room and you will see that it's not a straight line like this it's always a filleted line uh, or a filleted corner like this okay so if you apply a chamfer now you will see that we have that uh, fillet in here now okay this is very important for realism. Believe me, it uh, makes whole, all the difference in the world. Uh, but if you use separate objects, if you don't attach these and just use two, let's uh, actually keep the chamfer on and uh, th that way we will be able to compare them a little bit better. Uh, now let's input the values for this. Uh, it's not that important. I, uh, you don't need to even repeat this. But I just want to show you that they have uh, different outcomes so I'll hit S and move this to this corner in here uh, as you can see before the chamfer it exact looks exactly the same but when you apply chamfer to this as you can see they will look very different okay uh, here we have a filleted corner and here we have an inverse fillet like this this could be the thing you are looking for by the way and if it is you can achieve it like this but um, for a wall, a painted wall, you will need something like this, okay? Whatever, it's, it was a long introduction, so let's just delete the chamfer and the extrude and hit T again, and let's learn about the chamfer, uh, sorry, attach and attach multiple tools first. Okay, what I wanna do is to create an inner wall in here, which, which has a thickness of 10 centimeters. I'm just going to create a rectangle, and let's change the dimensions to 250, for the width let's uh, input 10 and let's hit s to move it to this corner in here and then in the x-axis i want to move this um, three meters okay and now we have an let's g to be able to see this a little bit better uh, now we have an uh, inner wall and if you extrude these both again we will face the same problem these are separate objects but if you attach them and then extrude them uh, then you will uh, achieve the result you are looking for. Uh, to do that, I have selected this and the attach button is in here. We have uh, used this once before, so I, I, I'm sure you are a little bit familiar with this. If you click attach and just select the other spline, then they will become one object, okay? Line one, okay? Actually, let's rename these to be able to see this even a little bit better. I want to call this walls and i want to call this inner wall one 
And by the way, as you can see, this uh, this rectangle uh, primitive only has three properties, and this line primitive, or not even this is not a primitive, I guess. Uh, this is a real uh, double spline. Uh, has a lot of tools we can use, and when you attach them uh, in this uh, object, or they are the same object, of course, but uh, for this rectangle, we can use these as well. Okay, it uh, automatically converts this uh, spline to an editable spline. Uh, let's uh, undo this once more. I'm I want to show you the scene explorer, and in here you can see that we have wall uh, walls and inner wall, and when you attach these two you will only see walls, okay? Because they're the same object now. They're joined together. But you know that if you extrude and uh, chamfer now, you still don't have the desired end result because, let's chamfer that first, because you have separate splines. You need to weld them together. We know this from the previous lesson. So let's go to the top view and do that as well. I'll select this, hit 3 for uh, to go to the spline mode and there's a command called trim and this is very useful if you click on this you can just click here first let's move this down a little bit and go to trim again you can just click here and you can see that we can get rid of that uh, additional spline in there uh, let me show you what I did again uh, sometimes max um, uh, has a weird tolerance uh, tolerance thing. So what I recommend you to do is hit one, go to the vertex mode, just pull this down. A, sorry, pull this down a little bit. That way you will know where to select exactly. So you can hit three trim and just trim these and then weld these. Okay. Now if you extrude and chamfer now we have what we want okay and uh, don't think uh, this uh, only about walls uh, actually uh, this chamfer thing trick will come in handy in a lot of uh, models uh, so try try to think uh, you are modeling anything like uh, just look at your table and just shoot, pick one object and you will see that Sometimes the chamfer is inwards like this and sometimes it's outwards like this and it will make the difference, believe me. Okay, let's delete these again. So with, uh, we know that with attach now we can join objects together. But let's say we have a lot of objects, okay? Let's say we have something like this, a rectangle, and then we have 11 copies of this, for example, okay? And what we want to do is to go to attach and just attach these one by one. Or one more thing you can do, which is much smarter in my opinion, is to click on the attach multiple button and just select all the rectangles from here and just hit attach. And this way you will be able to attach all these objects together. Okay. And again, uh, let me show something more complicated. We could have... A lot of circles in here as well, okay? Okay. Let's see, create four copies of this as well. Now, it's even harder to just go ahead and select attach and just click each of these because we have some things on the way. Uh, um, this, in attach multiple, what you can do, and this is very cool, is you can filter things out with names. Like if I just type in Reggie in here, you will only see the rectangles in here. So you can just select them easily and hit attach. And now you just attach the rectangles, not the circles. Uh, you may, you could want to attach the circles, not the rectangles. You could do that as well. You could just hit attach multiple. Just type in circle in here or jir, <laughs> C-I-R. And then you can attach these uh, from here as well. Okay. Uh, this attach multiple is very handy. Sometimes it saves you a lot of time. Uh, again, if you are imp if you imported something from uh, AutoCAD, for example, and you have the layer names and you have the object names, you can just search for certain objects and just attach them uh, from the list. And it is very cool to do that. 
And for the last thing uh, I want to show you in this lesson, or last two things, let's say. The first one is the detach tool, uh, which helps you, of course, uh, as the name suggests, detach the uh, objects from the uh, one object uh, we are using, from the walls object we are using. Uh, let's say we want to detach the, or um, actually detach is uh, pretty self-explanatory, so let's say detach. Uh, let's say you want to detach the circles from uh, this object in here. Uh, you can hit three uh, to go to the spline tool and just select all the splines you want to detach and just hit detach from here, okay? And when you do that, it will create a separate shape called shape one. And then you, uh, in the walls uh, object, you won't ho have those splines anymore. And also uh, there were some options near detach. Maybe you saw them. So let me talk about those as well. Uh, as you can see here, we have uh, copy or reorient. Let's hit, click copy and just detach and see what that does. Uh, you can see that if I select this and move it, it leaves the splines in the uh, object and creates a copy of those. And uh, this is very handy when you're doing editable poly, for, uh, especially. Let me show you what I mean. Uh, I know that we haven't seen editable poly yet, uh, so don't uh, follow me on this uh, right now, but as you get to, got to know me throughout these lessons, I really like to show something uh, from uh, the upcoming lessons to make you think about those things as we learn the things we learn now, okay? This is very important in my opinion because when the, the, that subject uh, came, comes, uh, you will more easily, uh, you will be able to understand what I'm talking about at that point, okay? So let's... Uh, create a box for this. You don't need to follow this uh, as I told you. If you wanna, you can of course. And let's add an ed edit poly in here. Uh, let's say you wanna create a top part for this cupboard, for example, whatever. And you can select the top face, hit detach, select as clone or copy in the spline tool. And now you can add a shell to this top face. And as you can see, we have a separate object. Let's chamfer these and see uh, the separation in between as well. Uh, you can see that we have a separate object in here and a separate object in here. Okay. So try to think uh, of these uh, of these things uh, in those terms. Okay. They they will help us create copies from faces, create copies from segments, even uh, whatever you want to do. Uh, if, for this example, for the wall example, we can also create a copy from these segments. Uh, I'll hit, I have hit two to go to the segment mode and just select these. Uh, as the copy is selected, I'll hit detach. And then, as you can see, you can create a separate wall from here. Attach this again. Uh, let's trim this. Uh, let's go to weld and now we have a copy of that wall okay i'm going to delete these let's delete these as well now you can just add an extrude and we have these sh this shape in here okay so uh, you can use detach to create copies as well okay for the last thing in this lesson uh what i want to talk about is enabled and disabled uh, tools under editable spline, which means uh, it's a little bit complicated to think about this uh, because when you go to the vertex mode, for example, you will see that a lot of these of these tools are not activated. They are grayed out. They are not, they are disabled, let's say, right? We can't click on them. The reason for this is each of these commands or tools or uh, commands, let's say, that's a better uh, word for these, I guess, uh, works with some of the sub-objects or corresponding some objects Let's think about this. Um, the trim is not activated in the vertex mode, for example. Let's, let's think why uh, could this be? Uh, as you know, the trim uh, just cuts out a portion of a line, right? 
it, it's not, it shouldn't work with vertices because you can't trim a vertex. Vertex is just one point. You can trim it. You can delete it, of course, but you can't trim it. You shouldn't be able to trim it. So the trim is not activated. Let's go to the segment mode, for example. You can see that fillet is not activated. What fillet does originally is it creates this, it breaks the uh, vertex to two vertices and just creates this tangent uh, edge or corner. And when I uh, hit three, go to the spline mode and select the spline. And if I just fill it this, where would it fill it, right? It, it's not, there, there's not a vertex to break now, right now, okay? If I told you to fill it this spline, you wouldn't be able to understand where to fill it, right? So Max works the same way, okay? So try to understand this. Uh, these uh, tools or these commands work with corresponding sub-objects, okay? It's not that you don't have to memorize which uh, of these are activated in which of these sub-objects. You just need to think about it. Um, and uh, it will be obvious to you, okay? Uh, I hope. Okay, this was the last thing I want to talk about in this lesson. So uh, thanks for listening again. Uh, I hope you found it useful. If it was useful, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and click on the uh, notification bell next to the subscribe button. Thanks for listening. See you in the next lesson.